Hello friends, welcome to the world of English literature. Uh, this session we are going to discuss the play Proposal, which is for class 10. Now, we have already um, shown you the play in, in previous episodes, we enacted out the play for you and then we did a session about the summary of the play with a general discussion what the play is about. So, today we will discuss the play in more detail, uh, the proposal by Anton Chekhov. Um, and joining me here is um, Kriti. Um, how are you, Kriti? I'm good, sir. Thank you. Yeah. And so today we'll discuss the themes of um, uh, the play proposal. Okay, sir. And um, did you like uh, the play? Yes, um, sir. I did like the play. And did you watch the production that we put up? Yes, sir. I yeah. managed to watch the production as well. Yeah. And so once more, to point out the pronunciations in the play are in the Russian accent. So you should. Uh, not think they are the right pronunciation um, in English, you should check that out, but we try to make it as authentic as uh, possible. So, Anton Chekhov is a very important um, uh, writer uh, uh, as a playwright and as a short story writer of not just Russian literature, but world literature. So, he is amongst the stalwarts of Russian literature. Before him were Ivan Turgenev, Fyodor Dostoevsky, Leo Tolstoy, the big three. And then in the next generation is um, Anton Chekhov. Okay. And, and his short stories sort of form the basis of uh, modern short story, which many writers from India also followed, um, like Manto and Bedi in um, Urdu short stories. But Kriti, would you like to talk more about Chekhov and his life and his works? Sure, and, sir, definitely. Yeah. Anton Chekhov also worked as a physician. His job as a doctor did not pay off the time. Throughout his life, Chekhov would juggle two careers, devoting his energies to the professions of medicine and writing. Thank you, Kriti, for that information. And it's very interesting that Chekhov was a medical doctor. Yes, sir. Along with being a writer. But we also learned that he did not get enough money as a doctor, which is uh, surprising because medicine is considered to be a stable and a rich profession generally. Yes, sir. Now, it does happen. For example, in countries like Venezuela, doctors do not earn too much even today. Okay. But on the other hand, there are other poor countries uh, which have a very robust medical system, like Cuba has done a great vaccination program across the world with the COVID vaccine, etc. But um, coming back to uh, Chekhov, um, his profession was that of a medical man, but he was so passionate about writing that he had written about 400 short stories by the time he was 26 years old, which is phenomenal. So, bulk of his work and as you can see, as the readers would also notice, uh, he lived between 1860 and 1904. So, he, he lived only 44 years. And he has a phenomenal collection of around 800 uh, short stories, and most of them are top rate. Like uh, most of the stories, you would read and be delighted. And, okay. and even to date, Chekhov's collections are read. Um, right, let's learn more about his writing. Sure, sir. Chekhov, in his writing, weaves humor with pathos to magnify the inconsequential details of people's lives, helped redefine the short story genre. He also developed a technique of ending stories with what have been termed zero ending or anticlimactic conclusions. This technique makes the story seem more realistic and often more pathetic because readers are left to guess what will happen next. However, Chekhov also employs surprise endings to confound our expectations and we can never be sure how a tale will end. Right. So, these are the hallmarks of Chekhov's writing, um, the form of writing that he developed, which is very strong and which has been employed by writers uh, for generations. So, the first aspect is twist in the tale. Um, so, it is a pun on the word tale, T A L E and T A I L. Okay. So, like a twist in an animal's tale, mm -hmm. similarly, his tales have a twist. Okay. It would go in a certain direction, and what you have just called surprise endings. Um, that would happen. At the same time, you have also spoken of zero endings, yes. anticlimactic, yes. that it builds to a certain position and then he would completely collapse it. 
So, for example, we can talk about his short story, The Bet. The Bet is a very interesting short story, wherein there is a bet between a young man and an old man about the nature of life, etc. They are having a debate and um, about materialism, spirituality, whether material positions in life are important or not. And so, the young man says, um, of course, it is wealth that is important. And the old man who is rich says, okay, I will give you a certain amount of money, which was a huge amount. I do not remember what is in the story, 5 million rubles or something, on the condition that he stays inside a room for 20 years. And he will be provided for everything. It is not a jail. He will be given books, music, food, whatever he likes. So, the entire story sort of describes um, his ordeal uh, in that room um, and the kind of books that he reads every year. And it is also a sort of intellectual history, how according to what you read, your personality changes. So, the books that he reads, all those books are described in detail, the 20 years that he spends and how he changes from books to music, to becoming very lonely, to becoming withdrawn, all kinds of things. So, it is a very realistic portrayal of a person who is in complete isolation, uh, which also is very pertinent in the pandemic time, given that we are all isolated in one way or the other. But at the end of the story, when the 20 years are going to get over, this man uh, who is to win the bet inside the room, uh, he uh, leaves a letter and escapes okay. one day before. And the man who has to pay the money, meanwhile his fortunes have changed and he has gone bankrupt and he comes to murder the hero on the last day, but instead finds the uh, letter. And so, he did not have to pay and at the same time he escapes. The hero escapes because he uh, understands the futility of material pursuit. And uh, he understands that uh, life is not about wealth and it is not about isolation, that, that they were delusional for all this time, both the parties and uh, he goes off in some existential crisis. So, this is both a surprise ending, because um, we did not expect this. We might have expected surprise in the sense of a murder, that this man comes and murders him, that would be an expected ending, but the man himself leaves and uh, the other man is not able to kill him is a zero ending. It is anticlimactic. That yeah. sort of action, the violence we were expecting in, in the story does not happen. So, this is a rare combination in which both the zero ending and the surprise ending are there. So, once again to sum up, surprise ending is where what the story is building up towards, it completely falls um, to uh, an unexpected territory as it often happens in detective fiction, let us say or in many short stories of O. Henry or Guy de Maupassant or Anton Chekhov. And zero ending is where uh, all the expectations that have been built turn out to be flat, that nothing of that um, sort happens. And which is what happens in the play proposal as well. Um, it is a sort of a zero ending, it is not a surprise ending. Yes. So, what happens is, um, what happens in the, in the play at the end? At the end, he is almost waking up from the, uh, because he has fainted yeah. and he is almost trying to uh, wake up and uh, Natalia is there. So, the father of Natalia, as soon as he is trying to wake up, just gives the hand, hold the hands together and he says that, just get married and leave me in peace. Exactly. Now, this is also a sort of a surprise ending, because they have been fighting throughout the play, first about the property of yes, Oxen Meadows. Oxen Meadows and then about the dog. So, you think that this would not happen, um, but at the same time within the play, uh, so we, when we study a text, should look for the logic within the text itself. So, even though they have fought about oxen meadows in the first half of the play, when Natalia hears that Lomov had come to propose, she gets very excited, though they had fought bitterly and they do not seem to like each other. And so, within the logic of the play, you already see that if the talk is of marriage, everything is resolvable, but not otherwise. Not otherwise. If he is just a neighbor, the, property, uh, the issue of property or the dog cannot be resolved. Only if it is an alliance will the issue be resolved. And so, we should know already 
that they are going to get married despite this. So, it is a zero ending. In a climactic fashion, the usual climax should be that his heart actually fails and he dies. Then yeah. what? Th that will be a real shock. Yes. But nothing of that sort happens. They are all melodramatic characters and which is why this play is a farce. The father is loud, uh, um, the daughter is um, uh, very anxious and uh, excited and uh, the protagonist, the hero is faint hearted and, uh, and starts getting nervous when he is uh, inside a fight. Um, and so, this is an example of a zero ending where you expected him to die or the situation not to work out, but it does work out um, as posed at the beginning of the play. Right. What else about Chekhov? Sure, sir. Although the author sketches his characters with compassionate good humor, he never abstains from highlighting their faults, foibles and human weaknesses. Chekhov's stories are thus deeply humane works of fiction. In detailing life's poignant rivalries, they are unrivaled in their sense of authenticity. Right. And so, uh, what we get to learn here is um, that it is it's the day to day characters that Chekhov takes. There are no big heroes like Greek tragedy or, or like our own mythology. So, earlier, uh, in a tragedy, the classical definition of a tragedy, which uh, when you in, in your higher classes you learn, is that a hero has to fall from a high place. So, a king will become uh, a destitute, a beggar through change of circumstances, through some flaw in his character, that is tragedy. But um, here in Chekhov, he um, explains the travails of day to day lives of common people. Of course, these are not common people, these are feudal lords who are being talked about in the proposal and yet they are very common characters, they have nothing extraordinary about them, they fight, they gossip, they get very jittery, they get very anxious, jealous, all the emotions that um, general people have. And this is what um, um, Chekhov thrives on, to make extraordinary out of the ordinary uh, and that is a way of seeing, uh, that is a way of seeing the mundane to be able to bring out um, things from ordinary lives, to bring out the beauty of ordinary life or the problems of ordinary life in this way. And so, his works are also known as slice of life. So, if life were a cake, you take a slice and present it to the reader and this is a slice of life work. In all other works of Chekhov as well, like Bet we discussed is two common characters who enter into an extraordinary situation of this bet and um, they do extraordinary things despite being common people. There is another story in NCRT curriculum called the beggar, where uh, this man who is a beggar comes to this person and he gives him wood to chop uh, and other works to do and he goes away and eventually it turns out that he has become a well to do clerk etcetera and the man wants to take credit for it that I was the one who reformed you by doing this. But it turns out that he never chopped the woods. There okay. was a lady in his house, a maid, who took pity on him and chopped the woods. And this man out of guilt then reformed himself. Um, and so, Chekhov's message there is also simple that it is not by, uh, that one does not do charitable work just by uh, forcing charity, but a person's heart has to be changed. So, it is very ordinary day to day life characters and their extraordinary situations and how our psychology works that um, Chekhov thrives on and which is why his stories are designed to outlast uh, his time and our time because they deal with basic human emotions and uh, very intense drama involving those emotions. Right. That is really interesting piece of information sir. Yeah. So, I move forward. Other than the play the proposal, there are few more famous works of Chekhov. Chekhov's four most famous plays, The Seagull, The Three Sisters, Uncle Vanya and The Cherry Orchard are performed regularly around the world. Yeah, it is very famous plays, um, The Seagull especially and um, it would be interesting to know that um, uh, Chekhov was much more of a short story writer as we discussed and he did not have much confidence in his plays. 
but later uh, his plays started getting enacted and he was very famous in US uh, the proposal and the seagull are still played uh, in the United States of America so it's very interesting how literary works take on an afterlife despite the author not having confidence in them that literary works have a life of their own right yeah. so um, this was roughly the life and works of chekhov in which we also uh, discuss the play proposal and other works of chekhov and it would have given you a glimpse into his method of writing his method of thinking um, and now let us quickly look at the themes of the play in question the proposal okay sir important themes in the play the proposal the proposal is a one act play actually it is a fast written by anton chekhov in 1888 to 1889 in the proposal the theme is that marriage is not as romantic as some people believe the theme is based on two people who come together for a alliance lomov and natalia act like a married couple before they become engaged they are argumentative from the start right thanks with you that's a very good uh, summary of what the theme of the play is um and you said that lomov and natalia act like a married couple yeah. even before they get engaged and um, the the fact in the play is that they never get engaged they yes. get married while this man is supposedly half dead um lomov has fainted after the argument about the dogs and just when he wakes up chubukov the father puts his hand into natalia's hand and declares them married yeah um and so Uh, this is a farce as you rightly said a farce is a kind of a play in which there is melodrama there is exaggeration and which goes on to depict various things in life as as farce as ridiculous that things that we might take seriously in life may just be uh, ridiculous or the bigger point that uh, the writer is making is that probably life itself is ridiculous Anyway, this play is about marriage and about uh, marriage proposal and love and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, you also said that marriage is not as romantic as as people believe. So this is one of the key themes um, that it is not for love that uh, Natalia and um, uh, Lomov get married, but for a convenient alliance between two feudal lords, uh, two land owners. uh two elite people of the society so in general the structure of russian village in the late 1900s would be one land owner with several peasants and so a land owner would marry a land owner he would not or she would not fall in love with a common farmer and so um chekhov is m- making a point that love is also constrained by its class position yes. what class you belong to what part of the society you belong to and so on and so forth and so it would be difficult for land owners uh, land owner is only one the rest are all farmers so it would be difficult for a land owner to find another land owner for marriage and which is why natalia is excited because she is also getting older and lomov is definitely in a sort of a crisis he thinks he's 35 he has got a weak heart he should get married so in his very important soliloquy that we saw in the play as well as in the summary last time um he measures his own situation and natalia's and draws it point by point that he's faint hearted uh, that he's 35 he needs to settle down and natalia is good housekeeper she's not bad looking he's not excited about yeah. how good looking she is yes. but a negative expression she is not bad looking so he ticks all the boxes and decides that uh, he can marry her natalia on the other hand is alone with her father father is also quite old and uh, she needs to marry and so marriage is fine but there seems to be no love and which is what chekhov brings out through this play the first part they fight about an inconsequential piece of land which is by the way very consequential for the farmers but not for them but they fight it out yeah. over the idea of honor which also goes on to show how um mm, skewed and weird the idea of honor is over which there are so many disputes across the world um there are various honor killings that happen that we know of in our country over um, 
intercast marriages or um, or within the same go through marriages or things like that and um, it is so misplaced this sense of honor because uh, two people may be willing to s and uh, by constitution everything is consensual and why does everybody else enter in with their idea of honor whereas nothing exists it's all in the thin air and which is what chekhov 100 years ago is making fun of that they are talking about the idea of honor over a piece of land which they do not care about and the moment uh, the talk turns to a talk of marriage they forget all the issue of yeah. honor so honor yeah. is also reserved for a very contextual specific situation it's it's not sacrosanct so to say so through this farce chekhov is deflating the idea of honor um let us say as also the idea of love that these two people are not in love they fight bitterly over land and not just land then he reduces it even further they fight bitterly over dog like lomov does not faint on the fight over land but over dog yes. so they could uh, the issue of honor could also be reduced to the issue, talk of dogs uh, that they own and even uh, in terms of uh, the dogs that they own it is not about how much they love their dog but whose dog snout is better who is a better hunter whether the price paid for the dog was right or not right these kind of issues so chekhov completely sort of um, rips apart um, this kind of life of the elite of the society of russia and which is a reflection on on many societies um, as well and so in a way he is saying that marriage is not contingent on love and marriage is mostly done for convenience so he's making fun of both love and of marriage and and saying that they are both very convenient positions of life so um students you will have to think for yourself uh, about these things these stories give you certain ideas these ideas are also not sacrosanct um but it gives you insight into certain things about which we have fixed ideas about love or marriage uh, how they work but it may not be on the ground or the reality may be yeah. um, very different and through the arguments um, in the play uh, he is able to through very witty dialogues and that is also something to look at for aspiring writers how to write dialogues now through witty dialogues the character of each of these uh, um, characters comes out very neatly and so you in the end you are able to see who is who and what are their motives so um, since we are talking about dialogues let us look at some of the quotes from the play yeah, and sure. we can discuss them and they are also uh, funny hilarious dialogues of course uh, and for students uh, see these dialogues carefully remember where they are from the play and uh, and think about them both in terms of writing as well as in terms of how these dialogues build the characters so we'll also help you contextualize um, these dialogues shruti yes sir the first quote if he is come to borrow money he'll be sorely disappointed by chubukov right so this is from um, um section 1 and even though um, you know they hug and kiss and they are so nice to each other this is an aside that chubukov says that if he has come to borrow money he'll be sorely disappointed yeah. and so like we were discussing um, chekhov brings out the day to day life very beautifully so it's the classic case of neighbors living next to each other um, jealous of each other hating each other also perhaps but when they meet they will be delighted Uh, to show the world um, they overwhelm both chubukov and lomov in their meeting but chubukov thinks that he's come dressed in a jacket because he wants to borrow money which is why he has come right let's see the next quote natalia stepanovna is an excellent housekeeper she is not bad looking and she went to school what more do i want Uh, this is by lomov section 1 right so this is the soliloquy that we were just talking about soliloquy is um, a device in the play where a character talks to himself but he is talking to the audience to give them more information about 
uh, his mind or about a situation. So, here through this we get to know Lomov's mind of what he is thinking and which is what we just discussed now, how he uh, ticks the boxes, why Natalia is good for marriage. And so, it is not about love, it is about uh, that it is convenient to get married, they are neighbors, their properties will be joined, she will keep the house well and so on and so forth. Okay, next quote. Papa said, go inside, there is a merchant come by to collect his goods. Natalia, section 2. Right, this is a very um, interesting um, quote from Natalia. So, first they fight about the property, she does not know he had come to propose. Yeah. And then her father tells in anger that, oh, that uh, lowly guy had come to propose you. And then suddenly she changes and she wants him back. And so, she is telling Lomov that she did not know that he had come to propose. And uh, um, he had only told her that there is a merchant come to collect his goods, which is a strange euphemism. Euphemism is when you say something um, through nicer words or, um, or through some other words, not necessarily nicer words, and which is also Ch um, Chekhov's comment on the idea of marriage. So, merchant come to collect his goods, Chubukov was metaphorically saying okay. that he has come to shop for marriage, okay. which is what they are doing a transaction, they are weighing each other hmm. in terms of who is worth how much and what, whether they are a suitable match or not. So, indeed he has come um, as a merchant to collect his good and also this reflects on how uh, language is a very gender entrenched, that a man treats a woman as property yeah. and this is age old and this is something that students must think about, about language. That there are many points in language which are definitely very male centric. So, think about various things that people say to each other or how women are talked to and is there something in the language which is decidedly biased and slowly through day to day language we, we internalize these problems within us. And so, in 19th century Russia definitely women were considered as, as property um, and so indeed uh, Lomov is a merchant who has come to collect his bride. And so, this is a very important quote and you must, this is good food for thought. Let us look at the next one. One moment, please forgive the interruption, but you said my oxen meadows, but are they yours? This is by Natalia section 2. Right. Um, and so, this is where the play becomes very hilarious and um, you have included this quote because this is where the play takes the turn that till now uh, pleasantries are exchanged between uh, Chibukov and Lomov, then Natalia and Lomov and then um, uh, Lomov goes on to say, oh we are very good neighbors and we also our forefathers, ancestors have known each other and we also have this common shared boundary between us um, and he mentions oxen meadows as his own, which is where the play takes a different Direction. turn. Yeah. And they both argue about oxen meadows in a completely hilarious terms. And this quote we have included so that um, you can remember these some of these uh, passages to uh, see how funny dialogues are constructed. Right. These meadows aren't valuable. They only come to about 12 acres, but that's not the point. It's the unfairness. This is by Natalia in section 2. Right. So, just compare it with the last quote which was, my oxen meadows, um, did you say they are yours yeah. and they uh, she takes objection, uh, but also they want to sound very condescending about it and say that, oh, this um, meadows do not mean much, they are worth, uh, they are only 12 acres. That is not the point, it is the unfairness. And so, they fight about little piece of land which neither of them really cares about and which is being used by peasants. And this also Chekhov is showing how rich people fight over something that is inconsequential to them, but may be very consequential to the poor people. So, it does matter to the farmers which side the land goes. Actually, it is uh, as we get to know that land is a buffer zone where the peasants have lived for a long time 
and by virtue of living there for a long time, it belongs to them. They have lived there for a couple of hundred years, it appears, from the play, but uh, they still have a right over it and they can throw out the peasants any time. Um, and so, this also goes on to sh show how they could fight for absolutely inconsequential issues. Just hurry up and get married. She is willing and all that and so on. I give you my blessing, but please just leave me in peace. Shubhukov, section 3. Right. Um, so, this is the last lines, um, this is the last lines of the play almost, where um, uh, no more wakes up as we have often talked about. Um, and Chubukov just wraps his hand, places it in Natalia's hand and gets them um, married. married. And it shows the, how hilarious the situation is. That the man is just waking up from illness. Yeah. One does not know what uh, state of health he is in. But it's important to get them married. The father just wants to get rid of the daughter and get the situation resolved. So again, it's a comment on, on marriage as a social contract as well as a necessity um, in this case and um, so on. So, these were some of the quotes. There are many other interesting quotes and we would like you to pick up um, uh, those quotes and um, think about them. And we will have a couple of more subsequent sessions in which we will also focus on grammar and some exercises um, in the book and other aspects. Um, and I hope uh, this was helpful to you, the play, the summary and the, this discussion um, that we had. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us today and thank you Kriti for the valuable inputs. Thank you sir for having me here. Thanks a lot viewers. See you soon.